Hey everybody. So I'm currently in the process of 18650 modding this Sony Handycam HDR6 220. This camera may replace this uh, Sanyo Zacti CG20 as my primary camera for a Cube Computer Channel. Um, this would be my most complicated 18650 mod yet. Um, I didn't. I didn't originally plan on doing a video. But I decided, what the heck, let's go and do some footage. So I've already started the process. What I've done thus far is I have dissected the original battery pack, which was a Sony model MPFV30. So it was just a process of using these cutters and my X Acto knife to cut along the seam of this pack. So the pack originally went together something like, well, we can get it together, something like that. And it had the little circuit board in it, which would be, well, be something like that right there. But So the reason why I dissected the original pack is because this camera, unlike all the cameras in the past that I have 18650 modded, um, would run off of a single, either a single cell in series or two cells in a series parallel configuration where the two cells were in parallel so you had a 1S configuration and because of that I did not need to add any protection to the cells because the camera handled the low voltage cutout but this Handycam runs at 7.2 two volts. In other words, it has two cells in series. Now, of course, you can go on Amazon and purchase these little packs with wires already attached to them that are wired in a series. However, that is not necessarily safe to be doing because when you have this, when you have two lithium ion cells in series, you must balance them or you must have a circuit to monitor them to ensure that one does not get too low a voltage. That way, if you have mismatched cells and one has a little bit lower capacity it'll shut things down before um, it has a chance to damage your cells so we're reusing this little circuit board here and my plan is to attach this on the side of the camera so right here I've already cut off the old strap because I'm not going to be using the handheld strap to hold this thing. It's going to be on a tripod most of the time like the camera I'm shooting video with. So the 2S18650 pack is going to be on the side. Um, and my plan is to house the little circuit board here inside the old battery pack on the back of the camera. And here in a little bit I'm going to be printing out two dummy style 14 430 cells to go in here so they're just little hollow cylinders that would take up the place of the original cells so I got one of the cells right over here again it's a 14 430 size cell to put in perspective this here is an 18650 so you can see quite the difference in size and quite the difference in capacity. So these little cells here are rated for 500 milliamp hours and one of them is very very low in charge so it's no wonder the camera was not working for a long time on a charge. That was one of the reasons why I never used that camera that much is because um, the charge or the battery life was not that great. And of course here on Kikuru Channel I'm always wanting something that if the battery goes dead I can swap in cells. I don't want to go out and purchase proprietary battery packs where I, since I have a whole bunch of 18650s. So we are 18650 modding this camera. Now I'm, in the, I'm currently in the process of taking this dumb USB charge cable off here because we're not going to need it after I do this mod because I will not be using the camera to charge the batteries anymore. So it's a process of getting this off of here. Now you don't have to take the USB thing off of here. 
you don't want to it can be left in place but I am actually going to take that off okay so I got the little USB cable out of it I kind of had to take the brute force method of ripping it out but it, it came out it was it appeared to be in a socket but the socket didn't will come out and the individual little wires end up coming out and you can see the little gold connections on the end it did come out clean and I put this back together so that's ready to go now let's go look at the battery so here are the 3d printed 14 for 30 dummy cells I got them super glued to this plastic piece that used to snap over the lithium ion cells and what I've done here is on the rear of this or the uh, the shell I've drilled a hole what I actually did is I put this whole assembly in here and just drilled <clears throat> through the outside case which also went through the two dummy cells what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to feed in the wires there's going to be three wires you're going to have your positive your negative and your um, I guess we'll call it balance it'll go between the two cells that are in series and what that third wire will do is it will monitor the voltage of each cell <clears throat> That way this little PCB here can monitor the voltages of both of the cells and it can shut things down if either of the two cells get down to a too low of a voltage. <clears throat> so hopefully this um, BMS PCB, which BMS is a battery monitoring system if you want to call it that. Uh, this BMS PCB, hopefully it's a forgiving type. Hopefully it's the type that does not store the state of the batteries and reject to work with replacement cells. There are some out there that are like that, whereas there are also types out there that are not. I've watched videos on YouTube of people rebuilding these packs, not for this specific model of Sony battery, but um, others similar to it, and their PCBs were... A, they were um, adaptable so hopefully this will work and I'm looking at this and I see there is a fuse and it's hard to see here there's a fuse right there which um, will protect the pack however I still am going to actually put a fuse on this pack at least a fuse between cell 1 and cell 2 and have our balance wire attached here to run back to the uh, circuit board just as a little added means of protection in case something was to short out which is very unlikely but so this circuit board the way this works is it snaps in to this uh, mount a little work getting it in there but I'm not going to put in this yet so the way this works is this side over here is negative to the pack this side over here is positive to the pack and this is the balance so I'll solder in our black wire here I'll drill an extra hole to run it down through and around through to here our positive will go right here. I'll drill a hole there. That way the wire can get fed into the uh, dummy cell and come out through here. Which, by the way, if you didn't see already, these are hollow on the inside. I made them hollow that way so you can easily get inside them. All they're doing is they're just they're providing the structural rigidity needed to hold this thing together. And so one of the advantages of having a 3D printer is it took me no more than five minutes to go on Tinkercad for free and model this up. And I think it took like 15 or 17 minutes, if even that long, to 3D print both of these. So it's nice to have that thing. That being said, I'm going to finish putting it together and I'll post our next clip.
Okay, so I got the wires roughed in and I have them soldered up to the little BMS board which is mounted into the little case. Now it's just a matter of working on the battery box for the 18650s. Okay everybody, so I got the 18650 mod wired in but unfortunately when you go to turn this on nothing nothing at all and I verified that we're getting voltage up here at the uh, positive and the negative and what I can do I'm just making sure that um, our center tap is in there and it's in there it's soldered in I think what's going on is this monitoring circuit in this original battery pack is not liking this. It would probably wake up if I was to slap this on a charger, but then again, I don't even know for sure. So the other option is to just wire this straight into the camera, like I do with my other cameras, which are 1S. But the concern is if I put in two cells that are not exactly balanced, one will get over discharged, and that's not good. Okay, so you can see here we have put the USB cable back in. It was, it was just a matter of uh, opening this back up and just plugging it back into the terminals. And um, despite being kind of brutal taking it out, it didn't damage it. So, lesson learned. If we do this mod on one of these cameras, keep the USB cable on there. Otherwise, I would have had to purchase either the power adapter that plugs into the side of this thing or buy a charger. And the reason is, as I think I mentioned in the last clip, this BMS that's in this battery pack, um, the way it works is if you break this connection here, or you break the, you, you remove the batteries out, it remains in the open position until you go to charge it. So, what I did is, of course, as I mentioned, put this cable back on there. That way, all I have to do is just plug this up to a power source, like a computer, for just, like, a few seconds until this charge light comes on, and then it works. So, it's just a matter of um, securing this 18650 box to the side of the camera, and it'd be safe to say that we have officially 18650 modded this Sony Handycam CX220. So I should know, I, forget, I think I forgot to mention that these are unprotected cells or actually out of a laptop battery. And that's why it's so important that we use the BMS circuit in this battery pack because this, these two cells are in series unlike all of my other cameras, which I'll have me sitting here to show you. Well, yeah, I do. Uh, there's still any batteries in this one. This is Stormcam 1 for QComp MPDX. You can see how the springs are both on the bottom. The two cells are in parallel for 3.7 volts at double the capacity. Whereas, on this one, power comes, well, your negative is here. This cell is going this way goes this way and this way so it's in series it's a parallel so the nominal voltage is 7.4 volts at the rated capacity of one of these cells and if I didn't mention earlier we have to make sure that we match the two cells when we use this we have to make sure we have matching cells of the same capacity um, Whereas with the parallel, it's not quite as important. But yeah, we have 18650 mod this camera. Now it's no longer going to be just sitting on my shelf not getting used because, well, the battery. I can use my 18650's power to sing. And what's funny is, let me shut it down. Let's turn it back on. Show you the estimated. It says it, has, it, it estimates an hour and 23 minutes on the battery. Which I'll show you that again.
<laughs> so I'm pretty sure after a cycle that's going to probably go up significantly because that was the capacity that it was estimating with the stock 500 milliamp hour batteries and here we are running 2200 milliamp hour cells so substantial increase so this thing probably has some really good runtime. so let me get this back together 100 percent and i'll show you the final product okay so i got this pretty much done that's gonna make me a little door to go across this i'll probably use part of an old laptop battery pack case for that but uh as you can see here we are it's going to insert our cells and it feels so awkward doing it this way with one face in this way and the other face in the other way because if I did this on any of other cameras it would cause a direct short because the cells are in parallel not series but here we go insert that like that now you can see if I go to turn this on nothing happens so what we have to do is we have to just jump start it off the uh, computer this just wakes up the battery protection circuit in the old battery pack so I'm going to plug this in wait for the light to come on light is on unplug and now There we are. So anyways, <laughs> that is 18650 modding the Sony Handycam CX220. So anyways, that is for this video. And I definitely look forward to using this camera more often, including on videos on this channel. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video from QCareer Channel. If this is your first time, please subscribe to the channel and tick the bell so you get notified of a new video I post. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, leave a comment, and share this video as well as the channel with your friends to get the word out. In addition, I have a second YouTube channel that's QCompMTDX. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for your support.